Hey everybody, Ash here with Gin Sense, coming at you with another fragrance review. Today I'm taking a look at the new release from Paco Rabanne, Pure Excess Night. This one is technically not released in the US yet, but I'll go over how I got this in the video. This is the new flanker to Paco Rabanne's Pure Excess, and I actually really, really like this one. I reviewed this back maybe a year and a half ago, so if you haven't seen that yet, go ahead and check that review out. In this video, I'm gonna give you a rundown of this fragrance, how it smells, whether I like it, whether I think it's something that you should pick up, and whether I think that this is better or worse than the original Pure Excess. So let's go ahead and jump into this Paco Rabanne Pure Excess Night. All right guys, let's quickly check out this presentation. So here we've got the bottle. You can see it's a darker coloration than the original Pure Excess bottle. It has this gradient from black down to a dark blue at the bottom. One big difference on this as compared to the original is the cap. On this one, you can fully take the cap off. On the original Pure Excess, it was like a Zippo. Nothing on the back of the bottle. And then on the bottom, your batch code is right here. Everything else other than the cap is pretty much the exact same as the original bottle. It's got a good atomizer, very thick glass. It's a heavy bottle, it feels good in your hand. And here is the box. You can see there, name of the house, name of the fragrance, size and concentration down here at the bottom. Pretty sure it's coming through on the camera, but it has kind of a velvety texture to it. On the top, it has the Paco Rabanne logo right here. Here is the back of the box. Then on the bottom, you have your ingredient information and your badge code here. So there we have the presentation for Paco Rabanne Pure Excess Night. So like I said, this is not technically in the US yet. At least I don't believe so. I haven't been able to find it at any stores as of when I'm shooting this video. I actually ordered this from the United Kingdom. I ordered it off the website, The Fragrance Counter. The amount that I paid through The Fragrance Counter is essentially what I would have paid for this at full retail once it came out in the US. Uh, so I didn't really get it for a discount. Now if you wanna do the same thing, do be aware that it actually took me about a month to get this fragrance from when I ordered it. It was a super long shipping and handling time. Now they have on their website where you can pay nothing and get free shipping and they say that it'll take longer, but if you pay $10, you get tracked shipping that takes between 10 and 15 business days. That's not actually completely accurate. When you order from the fragrance counter, what they do is they ship a whole bunch of fragrances in bulk to the US with no tracking whatsoever. And then once it gets to the US, they have somebody here who actually takes each fragrance that they shipped in bulk and they kind of divide that out to who it's actually supposed to go to. And then they mail it on through the US that way, through the USPS. So for the longest time of your ordering process, you're gonna have no tracking and have absolutely no clue as to when the fragrance is gonna to get to you uh, because it's coming from the UK in, in bulk with no tracking whatsoever. You only receive tracking once the person in the US that they're using as kind of a middleman gets it and then ships it on to you. To be fair, once that person, middleman, whoever it is that they're working with shipped it on to me, I got it in like two days. But there was a solid month there where I had absolutely no update whatsoever and when I reached out to the company, that's what they told me. Just that it's shipped in bulk and I'll get tracking once it's shipped from their person in the United States. So in all honesty, you're probably gonna be better off just waiting for this to hit stores in the US than ordering through Fragrance Counter because at this point, if you order from them today, when you're watching this video, it's gonna be at least a month if everything happens for you the way it did for me and it's probably gonna be out in the US by then. That is how I ended up getting Pure Excess Night. Just have to be really, really patient. Now, when you first spray this on, you're gonna be reminded of Paco Rabanne Pure Excess. It has a similar DNA. And in actuality, I was kind of wrong on Pure Excess Night. The first couple times I wore it, I was like, oh yeah, this is really similar to Pure Excess. You know, it's very, very close. It reminded me a lot of the original. Uh, but when you compare them side by side, they're actually really different. They both share ginger, cinnamon, and myrrh as notes, but there are a lot of things that are quite different between the two. Pure Excess Night does not have the citrus or the green notes from the original Pure Excess, and that makes Pure Excess Night less fresh. Now, I would never say that Pure Excess is a fresh fragrance, but when you compare these two side by side, you'll see what I'm saying. In the very initial blast, I mean the second that you spray it on, if you smell on that first couple minutes, it does have a very slight astringent note, uh, which I am taking to be the ginseng that's in here. That ginseng doesn't last very long though. Ginger goes over top of that 
pretty quickly. And then about five minutes in, it starts to sag into what it smells like for most of the life of the fragrance. Early on, Pure Excess Night has a, a really sexy, sweet mix of myrrh, cocoa, vanilla, cinnamon, and caramel, all working together. Those notes are spread out through the top, mid, and base, but honestly, you can pick them all up within the first five minutes. Pure Excess Night does come across a little bit denser than the original Pure Excess, but it's not cloying at all, which is a positive. It is not as effervescent or sparkling as the original Pure Excess. Some people will say that the original reminds them a little bit of a cola, the way that it works off their skin, like uh, a soda, and that doesn't happen with Pure Excess Night. Instead, it's more of like a syruped sweetness with kind of a balsamic undertone. In the dry down, Pure Excess Night is warm, uh, very slightly powdery. It's got that balsamic resinous sweetness from the myrrh and then a vanilla salted caramel mix. It's really, really nice. And as well, the cocoa or the chocolate note that's in Pure Excess Night, the more that dries down, the more it reminds me of patchouli. Now, when I say patchouli, I don't mean an earthy patchouli. I don't mean a dirty patchouli. I don't mean a patchouli that's gonna remind you of hippies from the 70s. Just a very rich, chocolatey patchouli. All of the notes in Pure Excess Night work together very well. The fragrance never comes across harsh to me. It never comes across like something's out of place or something's out of balance. This one is just a warm, sweet fragrance that's made to feel kind of seductive. The first couple times I wore Pure Excess Night, I was a little bit nonplussed. It didn't blow me away. Um, I compared it a lot to the original Pure Excess in my mind. Uh, I felt like they were more similar than they actually are. But then as I gave it more wearings, it started to grow on me a lot more. And then a couple of times, I went ahead and wore Pure Excess Night and Pure Excess side by side at the exact same time, sprayed them on, at the exact same time. Kind of let them develop and made up my mind from there. And that's when I began to really realize that I had fooled myself into thinking that they were a lot closer than they actually are. Again, you can tell that these are in the same family, that they share the same DNA, but they both diverge and go completely separate ways while maintaining that familiar feel. This is a sweeter fragrance to the original Pure Excess. It's a darker fragrance. It concentrates more on myrrh and then vanilla and salted caramel and cocoa, whereas the original Pure Excess had those green notes, a little bit of citrus, it had sugar, it had a liqueur note. Pure Excess to me, a little bit more versatile than Pure Excess Night, but that's taking nothing away from Pure Excess Night. In my opinion, this is a really solid release. It's a really solid flanker. Now we've been having flanker overload lately as far as designer fragrances go. It seems like every single week there are a couple new flankers announced, a couple new flankers released. It's just nonstop nowadays. But a lot of the flankers that have been coming out, at least, have been solid. Honestly though, I would rather have a flanker of a fragrance I like that's a solid release, like this one, than a new line of fragrances that's maybe half-baked and not to my liking. So, you know, we'll take those victories where we can get them. For me, this is gonna be a fall and wintertime fragrance where it's very sweet, dark, resinous, uh, not something that I really wanna wear in high heat. You could possibly pull it off at the beginning of spring, but once it starts to get warmer into summer, not gonna be something I'd be reaching for. And even though the name here is Pure Excess Night, it's pleasing enough, it's versatile enough that you could wear it in daytime as well. So for me, fall, winter, day or night. Projection, very solid for the first two hours, but honestly, even after it starts to tone down, it's still a good performer. Even three plus hours in, it's still strong enough that you can pick it up from at least two feet away from me. And longevity, 10 plus hours each time that I've worn it. Just a couple days ago, it was below freezing outside. I hit myself with a spray here, a spray here, just one on each arm, threw on my jacket, went about my day. My coat still smells like Pure Excess Night. This stuff just clings to your skin. It clings to your clothes. It's just got great staying power. Literally all day, it was there. It was projecting. I could smell it. I could pick it up, but it was never too in your face. It was never too cloying, never too strong. It just gave off a nice scent cloud. So when you walked around or people came around you, they could pick it up. Just very pleasant wafts. It's not one of those fragrances that you spray it on and it's so powerful it gives you a headache or gives other people headaches that are around you. It just works. This is one of those rare situations where they take an eau de toilette fragrance, they do a flanker that's an eau de parfum, and then the eau de parfum is actually much stronger than the original. A lot of times it seems like when a fragrance house releases an intense version of a fragrance, 
it's not actually intense. A lot of times it will perform basically the same as the original or sometimes even worse. That issue is not here though. Pure Excess Night off my skin, very good in terms of performance. At this point, I'm pretty sure you know whether I like this one or not, and I do. I think that this is a very solid release. Like I said earlier, when I originally sprayed this on, first couple times I wore it, I wasn't very impressed, but it grew on me more and more and more, and honestly, that's what happened with the original Pure Excess, so that's not a huge surprise. This one does not change a huge amount off my skin. Uh, really, about five minutes in, once the cocoa, the vanilla, the caramel, all those notes come together, um, it stays pretty much that way through the dry down. The only real difference is the cocoa begins to smell more like patchouli, but like I said earlier, it's not an earthy or a dirty patchouli, so don't worry about that. It's hard for me to ever tell you to buy something at full retail when I know that before long it's gonna be available at a discount. But uh, I think that if you like the original Pure Excess or you like those notes that I just mentioned, you should absolutely seek this out in stores when it's available in the US and test it out. See if it works off your skin, see if you like it. I can tell you that me personally, would I buy this again? Yes, I would buy this again. And if I had to buy this at retail, would I buy this again at retail? Yes, I would buy this again at retail. Recent reviews that I did, like Mont Blanc Explorer, would I buy that again at retail? Absolutely not, no way. Or Mercedes-Benz Select, no, absolutely not. This one though, really, really solid. I really, really like it. The only thing that's kind of a drawback is we're heading into spring right now in the United States. So that means I've got maybe a month that I can wear this in. And after that, once it starts to heat up and head into summer, it's gonna go back on the shelf until fall. I'll leave a link in the description for the fragrance counter where I picked up my bottle in case you wanna buy one from there too. Just be aware, like I said, if you buy it from there, you're probably looking at a month before you get it in your hand, yeah, at least if you're in the US. And don't expect any information from them other than uh, it's, it's on its way. I don't know when it's gonna get there though. If you have smelled this one, let me know what you think about it in the comments below. Do be aware that you're gonna see a little bit of hate on Fragrantica about this one. People that haven't smelled it, people that don't like flankers, or people that didn't like the original are all gonna hate on it. All right guys, thank you so much for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe. I'll see you guys again next time with another fragrance review. Thanks guys.